Let's start then, shall we, uh, talking about, it's a subject I don't always get into, the goings-on within schools, uh, but smartphones, you know, everyone these days pretty much has them. Uh, certainly, as well, young children. I've got to say, I'm not sure how healthy that is. Anyway, the government's come out today with a new policy in this regard. Let's have a listen to Gillian Keegan, our Education Secretary. What we want to do is empower head teachers to make sure that mobile phones are you know not used in school and i think that's something that all parents uh, will probably welcome well there's, there's lots of problems it's um texting and being on social media when you should be um you know being taught and learning your lessons it's um sometimes bullying and sometimes it's um you know people sort of uh, ostracizing somebody on social media that's something else that you see it, it, you know it's it's very pervasive there you go. Let me start with you, uh, Lord Moylan. This whole notion, I mean, I want to be clear, everybody, by the way, because a lot of schools are already doing stuff like this in schools. This policy today, I'll just bring you up to speed if you're not already. There's four options basically on it. Option one, no mobile phones on the school premises at all. Option two, mobile phones handed in on arrival. Option three, mobile phones kept in a secure location. Option four, never used, seen or heard. Basically, you can have it at the bottom of your bag switched off. Where are you on all of this, Lord Moylan? Well, I personally don't think mobile phones should be allowed in schools, but I think the important thing here is the government isn't actually telling head teachers this is what you've got to do. Mm. They're saying, if, these, if this is a problem for you, here are four options, and if you choose one of those options, then the government, and as far as we understand it, the law, will back you up. You have the right to do this. And these are suggested options you could take, and they range from the milder to the more, the more extreme but it remains the, the choice of the, the head teacher, the school's policy, what to do. I personally think um, not having them in school is a really good idea. Um, it doesn't mean to say um, non-smartphones can't be available. It doesn't mean to say that children have to be totally have contact with their parents when they're travelling home or whatever. Um, but smartphones are addictive and they do distract. And I think, um, you know, this, this really the key point is we need children to pay attention to what's going on in school. By the age of 12, 97% of children earn a uh, phone. I don't think it's a smartphone, but they earn certainly a phone. Is that necessary in this day and age? You tell me. Uh, where are you on it, Kevin? Well, I look forward, Michelle, in a few years' time, yeah. when your son yeah. uh, starts having the conversations with you, right, mm -hmm. based on peer pressure and asking for a phone, OK? It's a nightmare, and it starts earlier and earlier, and the... It's hard for parents to say no devices. I do agree with much of what Daniel said. I think mobile phones, with all the, the wonders of technology, they're great, but they are often very unhelpful to learning. And I think today, today's story is basically a rehash of old, old news by the government, but it gives head teachers now, get on with it. Get on with it. Control mobile devices in schools because you need to. Yeah, and I get, I know what you're saying about the whole peer pressure um, scenario, but what I've never really understood, and yeah, we can have this conversation in about 10 years or so again. We can ask me back about this, but why don't parents come together then and say, look, collectively, all these kids in the class, they want these smartphones and stuff. They're aged 10 years of age. We don't think it's appropriate. Let's collectively come together as a parental group and we all draw the line and say, no, kids, you're not having them. Michelle, it... It, it sounds so easy like that, right? But I can tell you, as the father of two daughters, age 18 and 16, that would never have worked, OK? If I'd have ever said to Nuala and Tully, you're not, you're not having them, they would have just not had it from me and my partner. It doesn't work like that. It's impossible. Yeah, but you're buying them, Mum. You're buying the yeah, phones for them. You are, but you, they, they, they talk then about they're isolated, they don't want to be the odd ones out. It's just never going to happen. So what's really important is that schools do this. I think it's really good. And can I say, I've got a good friend, so many viewers of your show, one of them, Edith Pittman in Cumbria, in, in Kendall, she thinks the same about this of an older generation, and I think you... you Who's, where's Edith come from? Because she's one of your viewers, and she passionately says how much she loves the show. Oh, hello, Edith. Oh, we like that. Hello, I love it. you watch watching Big tonight. Fan. Big fan. I think you are... Um, it's just your kind of offsetting your parental duties a little bit. You're saying, oh, yeah, it's really hard. Parenting's supposed to be hard. A good Michelle, parenting is supposed uh, to be hard. Listen, any, anyone 
listening to this or watching it who's got kids over the age of 10 is saying, Let's, let Michelle Dubry give me a ring when her son is old enough. Um, do you have kids or grandkids maybe over the age of 10 or there or thereabouts? Are you in this camp now, which Kevin's explaining to me, that actually these 10-year-olds run the roost in your house and it's on their, they are dictating to you uh, what you go out and spend your wages on, Kevin, and provide them with a £1,000 plus fun? Is that, am I like being a little bit naive here? Because I've got to tell you, if my 10-year-old thought he was coming into my house telling me that, Mummy, you're going to give me this £1,000 plus for this telephone so I can be like my friends, uh, my child would be getting a very short, sharp, no, I'm not, that's not going to happen, young man. Where are you on it? This whole notion that parents actually, because we've discussed the school thing, I think we're all in agreement, actually, yes. that within a school environment, mm -hmm. get off your telephone. So we've got a nice um, element of agreement. We like that. But this parental aspect... Do you well, think that parents need to be a bit tougher? Am I being a bit naive or what? I'm not a parent. I've never been a parent. So I don't think I'm the best person Are you a godparent? qualified to. I am a godparent. I'm right. a godparent to... I've got seven godchildren, believe it or not. Cool, blimey. That's quite a lot. I drew That's the line. expensive, Daniel. I drew the line. At, you must have a bob or two then, because people yeah. tend to choose godparents. Well, they they think, think they've got a bit of... See, they think, you see, that I've got some money. But, ah. um, but they're going to discover in due course <laughs> that it's all been blown. None of, it, none of it's going to be left. Um, anyway, whatever little there is. Um, so I don't think I'm in a position to, to preach to people, but I will say that in an older generation, I'm going back, there was a thought amongst parents that actually saying no to children was good for them. And it wasn't just a case of I'm, I'm saying no because I don't want to say yes, but actually denying children some of the things they wanted was good for them because... Yeah. And, and I think that idea is gone. I think there are parents, of course, who still say no because it's a ridiculous amount of money to spend on something, be it a phone or something else. Yeah. But when you see the money they do spend on children sometimes um, and, um, and what they do, I think this idea that actually bringing up children to a sense of self-denial um, is, is, has gone. And I think that is a bit of a loss. I think it is good for their character if they yeah, I, I... learn that some things, they're not going to get everything they want. No, I, I mean, I, I think making sure you don't spoil kids and discipline saying no is, is one thing, but I'm just really interested if there are any viewers or listeners with kids, you know, 13 and over who've said no phone, no device. I'd love to meet one. Um, well, like I said, you need to reconnect with me in about 10 years' time. I will be the first, no, I will you be won't. the first person. No, you won't. You'll be eating your hat. I don't think, you see, I was uh, at Legoland this weekend. Other theme parks are available, everyone. And I was really struck, actually, by the amount of children, and I'm talking, like, often as well, babies, or not babies, but small toddlers in prams. Mm. And they were in their prams with, like, um, an iPad-type thing, a tablet, yeah. in front of them. And I'm thinking to myself, mm. you've paid all this money, you've brought your, your children to somewhere that Hard you know to see that, yeah. and then you you're shoving your kid around in this um buggy watching whatever it is on an ipad agreed. like why agreed. why would you do such a thing anyway uh catherine babel saying she i've got to say i quite like this lady you'll know she she's very tough she's the headmistress uh, of michaela school she uh, tweeted out today about the smartphone thing excellent news but mm. we need much more than this smartphone and social media must be banned for under 16 year olds but again Maybe I'm being really harsh. Maybe you're shouting at me home saying I'm naive. As a parent, why can't you just stop your child going on social media? It, it's very difficult to, to uh, enforce that. I mean, I, I ultimately agree with you about that it's parents' responsibility, parents or carers to, to do this. But it's really difficult, you know, and I do believe in discipline. And there have been loads of rows in my house about phones and they will carry on being it. Um, uh, and the youngest has had to sign uh, sign up to not uh, deleting TikTok till her GCSEs are over. So I'm living this right now, and I'm glad that school, schools have already been able to and should carry on taking a tough line. But, you know, um, there are the bigger challenges in schools about funding, budgets, staff and buildings. Indeed.